on this edition of The Self-Publishing Show. I think the medium, this video format, the rhythm of the way TikToks are produced, this is going to be non-optional. This is the way content needs to be presented now and for however long TikTok be, you know, is the up and coming format. Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers, no more barriers, no one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first-time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self-publishing success. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to The Self-Publishing Show with me, James Blatch. And me, Mark Dawson. Hello, Mark Dawson. How are you? Um, yeah, I'm all right. I had a, I didn't tell you this. I had an accident yesterday. Oh, you look like you're in one piece. <laughs> or maybe your body yeah, legs are I, missing. I don't know. can't see your legs. No, I'm, I'm fine. I was quite lucky. I was on my bicycle um, and uh, just going into the office in the afternoon. And um, it's a quite narrow path near the house. And on the left-hand side is a great big bank of nettles. And, the, and they were quite close. So I thought, okay, I'll just kind of steer over to the right. I don't want to, don't want to run into the nettles or anything like that. I had shorts on. I uh, went slightly too far to the right and caught my handlebars on a fence post, <laughs> which then um, kind of sent me back to the left. And so uh, and I, I came completely off, fell off the bike completely. And um, luckily, the good news was I had a soft landing. The bad news was it was in the bank of nettles that I was trying to avoid. So um, I was, I've, I've never been stung with that before. I was, I'm still, I can still feel it on my arm. But for like all of yesterday, my, my whole, my arm and my leg were, um, just stung to buggery, basically. Did your mother was, not? Was, did your not, mother not come <laughs> over with some dock leaves? When I looked, I, no, of course there is um, psychosomatic, isn't it? Not psychosomatic. Yeah. It's, uh, That's a, it's placebo. Uh, it's a placebo. Yeah. So no, I, I didn't. I was actually kind of lying in the in the nettle, thinking I'm in the nettles, so I better get get up. I didn't think of dock leaves, but I did go and have an antihistamine tablet, which helped a little bit. But um, and I think the main thing is kind of washing it with soap and water to try and. Um, get the bits off but Ooh. it was actually quite it was quite painful mm. i mean you get the odd sting and the time i get the odd sting is playing golf which says a lot about my golf that i end up in because you're so slow the insects <clears throat> land on you and uh, no yeah. stingers yeah. i end up searching for my oh, ball in I the see. undergrowth but yes, uh, the yes. odd sting you can brush off but i think when you get a big wad of them in one go i don't really oh, know what why they sting mm. I mean, are they? Uh, why don't other plants sounds, have? I mean, are they trying to? Why are they trying to keep us away from them? What do we want with nettles? I don't know. I don't know. They're quite nice in soups, apparently. But um, not that I've ever had nettle soup. But yeah, right. that was. Uh, yeah, I'll be a bit more careful next time. That was. It wasn't pleasant. Well, your brush with uh, with death. Well, stinging nettles. <laughs> that's a, that's a really that's a first, that's a first world brush with death, isn't it? Oh, I had, yes. I had lots of nettle stings. <laughs> it is. I know it sounds pathetic. I almost made a bad taste joke, but I refrained. Okay, I'll make it afterwards to you privately. Um, now, uh, oh, wait. I've got a little fuse books. Uh, what's the word? I was going to say bloat. What do you say when you show off? Gloat. 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 You don't bloat, you gloat. We got a <laughs> uh, bestseller tag on one of the books this week. We did a big blast last weekend, uh, sort of uh, offer stacked, whatever you call it, promotion stacked, um, with our using our five days free. And then had a big sales spike in the week that followed. And we've also mm. um, been tweaking the Facebook ads. But anyway, yes, the number one in the series is was down. I think it's down to 106 in the Kindle store this morning. But it's been it's been high. Is it paid? Is it paid now? That was paid. It's paid, yeah. It's paid now. That's very good. Yeah, really good. And the number one bestseller tag in military thrillers, which is a proper category, right? This is not woodworking with that. Um, do you remember the, the example we had of the romance guy holding a chisel or something on the front of a romance book and she, she put it into a woodworking category for fun and it got number one uh, tag there. This is a genuine number one tag. Yeah, I see. Now this, I've actually just clicked on one of our ads because I'm too lazy to oh, find that's it out the ad. Oh, that cost us money. So, sorry about that. But um, yeah, that's 200 in the store today. That's pretty good. Yeah. At 199. So no, that's very good. I mean, that will be making decent money at that at that level. Yeah. So, yeah very good. So really pleased with that. We've uh, we've worked hard on these these books, and um, it is it's you know, none of this is fire and forget. We talk about. Uh, I mean, there's this whole movement of passive income, Pat Flynn and all of that. But the reality is that you, you know, you, you work every couple of days on Facebook campaigns, you check on them. 
Uh, I do the stats once a week. Um, and we're now working with a partner with Arnus on these, which is great. And uh, yeah, but we're looking forward to launching a n- couple of new series in the next month with Fuse. Another series from Kerry, a detective series. Covers look great for that. And then a new author, Ian W. Sainsbury, contract signed with Ian. Kindle Storyteller Award and a series from him that will be sort of new. The first book's been out as a three-parter before, uh, but we're looking forward to uh, doing that. We'll perhaps talk about the strategy for that on the podcast as well. It'll be interesting to to decide. I did have a little blip uh, this week with um, with my own book. Uh, so I did what you suggested. This is all your fault, this is, uh, which is to go wide for a week and then go exclusive and sort of give the market a chance to buy it all over the place. And then, then I went exclusive. And I know this is for an, uh, this an is, existing book. This is I've for, never said that before. This is for the final flight. Yeah, I've never said that before. Why for a new for? book. For a new book. When I launched it, you said go wide for a week and then oh, enroll. Right, no. When, when, no, no, no. I would say go wide at the your pre-launch. It's fine to launch wide, but then go, go exclusive. Don't yeah. do it the other way around. No, that's the, that's the way I did it. I launched wide. You launched. When they oh, went exclusive. Right. So you were wide. Yes. Now, I see. Okay. Yes. So for a week or so... I was wide, and I used Publish Drive, and then I... Hang on, hang on, hang right. on. You, you, you released it longer than a week ago. No, so not, you... not a week ago. This is a, I haven't got to the... That's, I did okay. this in April, but oh, the right. blip okay. was this week. Uh-huh. So Go this on. week, I noticed... So I did that. I was wide for a bit using Publish Drive. It's yep. the only other place I, I use that as one aggregator. Could have used Draft Digital. We use that for the other business, but I used Publish Drive. I wanted to try it out. And and then I withdrew it on Publish Drive. I left the you know, obviously the paperbacks up through Ingram. Oh yeah, it's the other place I did Ingram uh, for for distribution. Um, and I actually made ninety three pence today from Ingram. Got a check. Ooh. So that's uh, wow. Uh, and uh, and then enrolled in KDP Select. And this week I noticed the book was at one pound thirty three, not two ninety nine, which is what I priced it at. And I contacted. I couldn't see why. And it wasn't. I wasn't promoting it. Wasn't doing anything. And I contacted KDP. And they said to me, we've price matched it. And I said, we, they helpfully didn't tell me with what. I went straight to Publish Drive to make sure it wasn't, and it wasn't for sale anywhere. And I looked on Kobo and Apple and Google and all the obvious places, and it wasn't for sale anywhere, uh, the ebook anyway. And so I emailed them back and said, where? And they sent me a link to hive.co.uk, which is a retailer I'm not very familiar with in the UK. And it was through Publish Drive. So even though I withdrew it, it was still being listed then. It was a problem, I think, at the Hive end or the partner that they distribute through. But uh, it's, it's a problem not just because the price went down, although my sales went up and I actually it's an interesting little experiment. So as a result of this, I may actually reprice the book, but I'll have to do the maths on that. But the main thing is I'm in breach, right? Mm. Of KDP Select, that which really worries me because I don't want to upset, uh, you know, it's a contract you sign and, and you don't want to be a bad actor. Yeah in this field so i have contacted published drive they're investigating haven't got back to me they've got back to me say they're investigating and they can see what's happened and they're trying to get it sorted but uh, i guess that can happen but it's just a little warning out there that um you do need to well what i would do and i've never had that and the reason i use draft digital and i'm not i've never used published drive so um although you know we know king quite well um and, you know it's a Good service. Um, I've never had that problem with Draft to Digital, and a way I limit that is by only telling them to to send it to a very select mm. number of retailers. So I wouldn't, I don't pick any of the the smaller ones. Um, so I'll just go to Barnes and Noble if I'm feeling very lazy. Kobo uh, and Apple, yeah, um, the ones you know, it's it's not really worth my time to to. And obviously, I've done it before, but it's not worth my time to put those books up myself for couple of weeks and then to, then to take them down again but um yeah i have heard it happen before where some of the smaller retailers don't take the book down when asked and you can't easily check them all um and then but amazon will find them and I, i've never even heard of hive but obviously their mm. their um their bots are scraping everything um so yeah you've been you've been caught Yes, well, they haven't told. They have done nothing about KDP Select. I haven't had a "you're in breach" no, email you, yet. It's, you should go. You get a warning. Yeah, so all I've had so far, I haven't had even had a warning. All I've had so far is they've just price matched it. Mm. Um, I don't know how they're discounting it either. It makes it it's a bit weird. Anyway, no, they've discounted to the price, and you, I think, you'll get seventy percent of that. Yeah. Okay. So it's actually weirdly, it's it, it's not bad. It was probably making money, but it's it's not. Um, 
Yeah, it's, you can't do it. So even if it's making money, you would be involved. Yes, so you yeah. need to get that fixed. So anyway, I thought I'd uh, say that. But uh, yeah, an interesting thing will be to see, um, do the maths on, on the sales. They've definitely spiked since the price went down. There was a correlation. Who knew that? Something to do with supply and demand. Um, okay, now we are talking TikTok in this episode. Uh, so if you're trying to listen... And- just for this episode to talk about TikTok. I know it's a huge thing. We'll put somewhere in the notes that the TikTok bit starts here um, because I know a lot of authors are interested in TikTok. Now, I'm quite excited about TikTok for two reasons. First of all, I'm weirdly really like the platform. Uh, I find it very fun and amusing and uh, enjoy it from that point of view. And secondly, because we've seen a few of these come and go, Instagram and others and Twitter, and I've been involved heavily involved in twitter a little bit involved in instagram but know enough to know that they have not worked out in terms of at least so far maybe those platforms will change as being reliable commercially worthwhile enterprises for authors neither of those i uh, I wouldn't say that about instagram i would certainly say about twitter instagram I think I some authors do very well. Some authors do, so. but it's not that widespread. I don't think, and certainly I've not been able to do that. Have you been able to do that on Instagram? Yeah. You've made money on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, absolutely. I advertise on Instagram all the time, so yes. Oh, do you? I, you oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, Twitter, you, that's that certainly is the case. It's very Twitter ads. We tried that before; it didn't work very well. Twitter's good for lots of things. Are you talking uh, about pay, your paid ads on Instagram or organic? A um, bit of both, really, okay. but mostly, yeah, mostly ads on Instagram. Okay, but the early uh, indications from TikTok from multiple sources around the place is that it is a place that shifts books and moves the needle for Mm. authors uh, which is really interesting it's a very different feeling platform to everything else works in a very different way and it's not particularly accessible when you first look at it It takes a bit of getting used to but there are a couple of authors in our community um, who are fans of our courses and they are people who are starting to teach how to do this they are uh, Leela I think think Leela is how to pronounce it and Jane uh, <laughs> excuse me, it isn't COVID. I've had COVID. this cough for about three weeks. Um, and uh, so we've got them on today to talk about this. We are going to get them in to do a webinar to go into much more detail and teach you how to do a lot of this stuff. That will be on September 15th. You can sign up for free. It's a free webinar, of course, at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash TikTok, T I K T O K. And um, there's also some stuff going on in the background. Uh, you might be able to guess what we're talking to them about, but we won't announce that until we've uh, we've we've signed something with them. So, uh, let's have this interview. Let's talk about TikTok uh, with uh, Leela and Jane, and then Mark and I will be back. This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Uh, Lila and Jane, the the indie author TikTokers, welcome to the Self Publishing Show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much for having us. Now you sent us, I don't know how we ended up with the, or um, a screenflow of a presentation you did. And I was, comp- I found it compelling right from the beginning, the way that okay, I've had, I love TikTok. Let me take it, take it from there because most people glaze over, don't understand it, don't like it, especially 54 year old men, but <laughs> I'm into it. I, I, from a long time ago, I saw that it was inventive. I loved Vine before and I found it creative and joyous and fun and, and, Twitter can be quite a toxic place, I think. And and for me, although I'm sure there's, you know, there's stuff on TikTok I, I wouldn't like, but there's lots of people, even if it's just dancing or doing a little comedy skit, I love it. So I can happily lose a couple of hours of my life scrolling on TikTok. <clears throat> and so from that point of view, I'm a bit of a consumer. And every time someone had talked about using it to sell books, I've been a bit cynical because we haven't had a lot of success with Instagram, certainly not with Instagram ads, although I know some authors are big on Instagram. I hadn't seen necessarily the evidence that it was translating into sales, but you were talking about it in such a business-like way, um, such serious application that I think there's something, it seems to me there's something there, particularly in the romance uh, genre. So that's why you're here to, I think probably we need to keep (laughs) it relatively high level for this interview because I'm sure. I mean, your experience might be the same as mine. Most of my friends are not on TikTok and don't really understand it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we actually, we've only been on TikTok for four months. Okay. Um, and so that's actually one of the points that we like to make a lot of the time is that this is a platform where you can grow really quickly. Um, I just hit 10,000 followers yesterday and Lila's right behind me. She'll be there today or tomorrow. 
Um, and so those were actually my exact feelings as well. Um, in our relationship, Lila and I have been friends for like 15 years. In our relationship, I am 100% the tortoise and she is the hare. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I've been hearing about TikTok. We should look into this. And I don't know though if I'm ready to be on camera or I don't, I don't do dancing. And she's like, oh, I just made a video. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, so then I'm like, oh, well, now I got to do it. <laughs> yeah. So, so one um, of the things yeah. we talk about in our presentations is that Jane and I are both full-time authors. Um, we both, uh, we did that by choice. We left good paying um, white collar jobs. And Jane did um, financial planning and analysis for a Fortune 500 company. And I was the operations manager for an academic research center um, at the University of Southern California. And so we joke that whenever we approach anything, we take a collaborative approach. If either one of us wants to try anything, we, we say, we'll do it together. Like, hey, let's explore audiobooks um, or something like that. So we did that with TikTok. And our joke is that um, I bring an overly researched and she brings an overly analytical approach to anything we do. And that's what we did with TikTok, which is why after only a few weeks, we had so much information um, about it. And that's why we've said, you know, let, we're going to help other authors because right now TikTok is a little bit of the Wild West as far as um, being for books. There's tons of tutorials and information and videos about making TikToks, but it's aimed at that classic TikTok video, the sync to dance, the lip sync, something like that. Um, and the part of TikTok that is for authors and readers, which is the shorthand reference for it is book talk, pretty much TikTok, anything ending in talk. Um, there is author talk, and then there's everything else, movie talk, construction talk, mom talk, but book talk is really a very different place than main TikTok. And the content that you see there is very different than that classic TikTok content that you think about a 15 year old making. And I think that that's the information that people need to know that you're not going to be going on TikTok and attempting to badly um, you know, do a choreographed a dance. That's really not what book talk is about. Yeah. No. And, and really, like you said, you know, we approach things from like a scientific perspective or more, I was in corporate finance. I have a master's degree in business. And so that is how we approach everything. Because if I'm going to spend time on something, it needs to be something that's going to pay back. And for me, um, TikTok has been so much so that, that I left Instagram. I, I haven't wow. posted on Instagram in a long time. Uh, the growth is so phenomenal on TikTok and it's not just it growth in terms of followers and in terms of likes and shares, but actual conversion. And so um, Lila and I ran a ton of experiments and that's probably what you saw in the presentation, but even continuing as recently as two days ago, we ran an experiment where I did a video um, promoting a book called For Money. The video only has 2000 views. So don't think this only works for people who are viral. That's not the case at all. Um, with 2000 views, that book increased its average daily sales from its 90 day average fivefold. And that include that's continued from the day I posted the video yesterday and so far today. Wow. Um, okay. So it it really works. And we've done that's just one example. Um, as you saw in the presentation, we've done many different ways to target specific things that we can track, even though we feel that TikTok influences all of our sales across all retailers and all formats. There were specific things that we could run experiments on to identify those effects. And we went after that. For example, I gave a coupon code to my direct shop on TikTok and that resulted in $500 of sales in one weekend. So, and, and again, this is not from a viral video. This yeah. is from These are much less, so the, a much higher conversion rate than you might find in other areas yes. of, of online marketing. Yes. So let me ask you about the the bit you, you started with there, Lila, that the sort of goofy TikTok or whatever you want to call it. I mean, they are sometimes brilliantly creative and talented people mm -hmm. who've just found an outlet. It's not all goof. Some of it's people falling over. But that, like all social media platforms, I'm seeing what I want to see and getting more of the type of things that I've been looking at. So that's why I see that. And my daughter often says, oh, you don't see dark TikTok or this TikTok or that. She, think, she actually thought at some point there were different TikToks. And I was saying to her, no, that's how the algorithm works. You're just seeing yes. stuff because it's skewing to you. Are you saying that the people who are most responsive to you for this, for selling books, are basically people looking for that type of content? Or can you penetrate my for you stream, which we'll explain in a minute what that means. Um, can you penetrate to people who are, might be romance readers, but aren't necessarily following that on TikTok, if you get 
what I mean by that question? I do. And so you could, you could make sure that you've diversified a little bit in what you're posting, what sounds you're using and what hashtags you're following. Um, like all the algorithms there, you know, TikTok hasn't come out and explained how it works, but based on our experiments and what other people um, have put together, predominantly the TikTok is going, or the TikTok algorithm is going to funnel you based on common people you follow common sounds you use and the hashtags that you follow, as well as the videos you watch all the way through. Right. So I could try and get to a broader TikTok audience by expanding from what I've, I have now, which is I'm very focused on following and watching within the TikTok algorithm bubble. But right now I don't need to. There is such a large community on BookTok that I have not hit saturation on. I have no need to go outside of it. And I'm not going to waste my watch time or potentially confuse the algorithm by straying outside of BookTok, at least at this point. Okay. Do you know what? I think we should probably explain what TikTok is. Um, <laughs> because people have heard of it, but they don't yep. really know what it is. And I didn't know what it was I didn't either. No, for a long time. So. Uh, who wants to have a go at explaining it? I'll tell you that one. So um, TikTok is an app made by Chinese company ByteDance. They just updated their numbers in their last quarterly report. They have over a billion active monthly users now. Um, so while TikTok was originally aimed at younger crowds, and this is a common misconception we hear, the app is no longer just for younger people. With a billion people, there's an audience for everyone. Um, and the app is kind of an unusual piece of software because it contains both a video creation side and a content consumption side. So that's something that makes it a little different than some of the other um, apps that we use. And that's also, I think, what makes it a little um, less intuitive for some people um, and certainly was for us. Like when Lila and I first started doing this, I was like, I think I'm the stupidest person on earth. I am too old for this. I cannot do this. And Lila's like, no, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. You know, and she'll press all the buttons and figure out what everything is, you know, <laughs> and she drags me along with her. So <laughs> um, it can be a little overwhelming, but it is both a content creation and consumption platform. Um, and other than that, that's really what it is. You'll, you'll scroll, th scroll through a feed of videos and you'll find uh, hours and hours draining away, like you said. You know? Yeah. So you can sit there, yeah, you just fire it up and start following the first. It has, it has what's called a following and for you, the main two Correct. streams you can look at. Think of them as, as, fa as news, news stream. What, what do you call What do you call them in, in uh, Facebook? News feed. News feed. News there you go. That's the yeah. word I'm looking for. Think of them as having two alternate ones. So one is specifically the people you've been you're following but the other one is the algorithm really at work suggesting things to you and that's how you find new people to follow or block and um i think getting on the for you, people's for you page is quite a big deal isn't it because yes. that's that's yes. tiktok doing its work for you um, so one of the really awesome things about TikTok from a creator perspective, if you're using a pro creator account, which is what we recommend to everyone, you have robust analytics. And so you can see what percentage of your traffic comes from the For You page versus what comes from your followers or even hashtags, um, people you've sent with a direct link, maybe from another um, social media outlet, like maybe if you sent people from Facebook, you can see all of that. So we recommend you want to be aiming for a For You page percentage that's higher than 50% and as high as possible is the best. Some of our best videos have like 97, 98% for you page uh, representation. And obviously that's where you're going to find new people, which is what we love about TikTok. It's not the same people that I talk to on Facebook who come over and see me on TikTok. It, they're new people. And that's exactly what I want. And Lila, is this a stage where people should be involved? Because a bit like Facebook, um, it's going to get more difficult down the line, the bigger, more organized the platform is. And it, eventually it's probably going to be pay to play like Facebook basically is you can't do much organically anymore. But I get the feeling TikTok is ripe at the moment and open for people. I absolutely think so. I think we're a little bit past the point of saying anybody who's joining now is an early adopter, but I think in six months, it's going to become semi-mandatory. It's simply going to be one of those places where an author has to have a presence. You, at the very least, you need to have a username and an account so people can tag you. Um, I, I think that it's simply not something people are going to be able to ignore. And one of the reasons I say this is we had, um, we run a class called Romancing Book Talk and we had a class member 
who was doing a really good job creating videos, followed um, everything. And she created a TikTok and she sent us, she said, hey, look, my graph, I got such great sales from this. And we noticed that she had taken the video and reposted it on her other social media. So it wasn't the kind of sort of controlled test that we had done where we could say it was only TikTok. But she got so much more play on a TikTok video on other platforms, far more so than she would have with a still image or a book trailer on Facebook. So I think even if you are telling, you are thinking, you know, I just don't, I can't do TikTok. I think the medium, this video format, the rhythm of the way TikToks are produced, this is going to be non-optional. This is the way content needs to be presented now and for however long TikTok be, you know, is the up and coming format. I also have seen reposted TikToks um, on Facebook and to a lesser extent on Instagram because Instagram is throttling anything, throttling back anything with the TikTok logo branded on it. But they are getting far better play than even um, videos I am making directly, even better than my Facebook Live videos, you know, when they repost. Wow. And those are supposed to be gold because TikTok or Facebook is supposed to push those. But my TikTok videos do better there. Um, I simply download them and re and upload them on Facebook as if they were a, a separate video. And it's something about the format, maybe the length. Uh, so TikTok is sort of forcing you to work within certain parameters. And I think those parameters are what people are responding to right now. So yes, I think now is the time to get on before it gets huge. Um, at this time, sponsored ads in TikTok are an absolute no-go. Um, and one of the reasons is that TikTok still is serving ads no matter what you select as your geographic location, it's serving them locally. So um, we're both romance authors. There are quite a few romance authors who are in essentially deep cover. They are unable to talk about their pen name um, because they would be ostracized or they're, you know, it's what we write is, is not as well as respected as it should be. And an author um, in the TikTok group we talked to, she did a sponsored ad and it served to her local town. Right. It was her face with her pen name. So we did. We have not touched sponsored ads because of that. I'm sure you are right. Eventually TikTok will figure out how to make it so that they can get everybody playing the ads game the way Facebook does. But right now we're selling books with pro creator accounts, but we are not paying TikTok. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I think there's some other hangups too. Like if we just want to talk about the ad platform for a minute, the targeting isn't as sophisticated as Facebook ads yet. So it's very broad. So you can't really drill down. And so especially uh, other fellow romance writers that we know have gotten um, mostly just negative comments when they add advertise. So we haven't found it necessary to go into the paid realm yet. Um, you know, of course, that that will probably change down the road. But for right now, the organic reach and the organic conversion is so good um, that we don't need to do that yet. Yeah. And we don't know much about the finance side of things. But if it's a traditional startup, because it's Chinese a bit, bit hidden behind that. But if it's a traditional startup, they will just be in the growth phase now. So they'll be happy right. for you finding followers and, and getting without having to pay anything, as Facebook was for 10 years before it right. slowly mm -hmm. started introducing restrictions on how much this algorithm is going to work and pushing you towards uh, the paid side of things. Um, just on the Chinese note, I, I, it is one of those things that occasionally somebody says to you, oh, don't go on there. You know, <laughs> don't go on there. No, no, because what, you know, they'll track your movements and they know everything about you. And I do know a couple of um, uh, people have said that to me early on and I've said, yes, but it's funny and uh, I want to be on there. <laughs> exactly. um, is, there do, is there any concerns people should have security wise over TikTok? I mean, Lila and I don't tend to be tinfoil hat people, so Good. we uh, we probably just go for it. I mean, maybe maybe we should be more careful than we are, but uh, for us, that hasn't been a major concern. Oh yeah, uh, Lila, you mentioned about like how you don't like to repost TikToks because it has the watermark on. Just for people listening out there, there are third party apps you can remove that watermark from. Uh, one of them is called CapCut, and then you can upload to say. For example, I probably the most effective would be Instagram reels. And I know people who do that, but then you have some copyright issues with the sound because it's not necessarily cleared on Instagram the way it is on TikTok. So just yeah. to say that, but I do think it can be effective. 
you were saying you got a you know really good response to the TikTok videos reposted elsewhere. I mean, Instagram maybe blocking the TikTok logo, but I wonder if the TikTok logo is part of the allure because it's a bit of a thing at the moment and people are interested in it. Lila might be why those were one of the reasons why people clicking on those videos more on other platforms, but. It absolutely could be. And I think especially um, the format, that um, heavy portrait video format, you know, that's made for stories and reels um, is where they really work. And so, I mean, absolutely, you it is makes it very easy. TikTok is integrated with the other apps. You can directly post from TikTok into your, particularly Facebook stories, um, and you can post directly um, to your Facebook wall. Now, if you don't want it to be a link that drives people back over to TikTok, you need to download it and move it over. But um, the format, as you say, like possibly it is, people are just interested because they're seeing TikTok. And uh, maybe that is a part of it, but I also think that there's something about the rhythm and the way um, the culture of TikTok and the culture of book talk yeah. that forces you to produce a type of a video, almost like a, a format of a video that I think people are responding to. And I think it's very really interesting because I think that it's a very, TikTok is a very organic and particularly book talk it's developed cultural norms and it's very organic. It's not being curated um, in any kind of way. And I think that's maybe some of what we lost as Facebook, um, Facebook kind of locked everything down is there is less of an organic culture, especially around books and readers developing because it yeah. simply can't have that organic reach, but we do have that over on Book Talk. And I think that's one of the reasons it is so entertaining is it is very creative people. You're talking about readers, you're talking about authors. We're almost by default, very creative, clever people. So give us this app with these tools and it's going to be really great content and it's not going to just be lip syncing and dances. And that's, that's exactly what I was thinking too. Like what I think makes it popular and what makes it successful on all platforms is that it doesn't look like a commercial. It's, it doesn't look like a commercial product. The less you are done up, the more you're a hot mess, the more you're genuinely interacting with people, the more successful it is. And that's something that I've had to get over. Another question we get asked a lot is like, do I have to be on camera? And I'm, I'm not really, I don't feel real comfortable with that. Like I wear a wig and makeup and all kinds of stuff, but I'm kind of slowly getting away from that because I don't think that's what people respond to. They don't want a commercial. They certainly don't want a book trailer. I mean, I'm saying that this, there's obviously, there are exceptions. We know that people have done well with those style of videos, but generally I don't think that's what people are looking for. And I don't think that's what they respond to the best. It's a platform that works with sense sincerity. And right. if it's insincere, I think Absolutely. it stands out very quickly, doesn't it? People, yes. I mean, I do look at the adverts, of course, professionally interested in some of those adverts. I let them run longer than I would normally. And yeah. um, you get two types. <laughs> you get the ones that look like adverts, which I think are probably okay. And then the ones that are trying to look like a viral TikTok video, but you know, it's a bloody advert. And sometimes they're companies that should know better doing that because right. it just makes you roll your eyes. It's insincere. That's the problem. But um, you were going to say something, Lila, and then I do want to talk about content creations. Why, why don't you go first? Oh, I was just going to speak to the sincerity and sort of the authenticity issue. So there's there's two things there. One is that uh, let's say that you're trying to drive engagement. If I had a Facebook post and I ended the Facebook post with a question, you know, what's the best book you read last week? As sincere as I was typing that, I feel on Facebook, it sounds insincere. What was the best book you read last week? However, on TikTok, if I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the camera and I say, hey, everybody, what was I, I just need a good book. What's the best book you read last week? Those are the same questions delivered in very different ways. And one of them is very sincere. And one of them gets people to come out of the woodwork, giving me recommendations and telling me about great books, telling about books they hated, but I should read them. And so I think that's kind of where there's a, a sincerity issue. And, and it's the, it, it can be the same words delivered in person, essentially, have a very, very different feel. Um, so that is sort of that level of authentic, you know, that, that engagement or that authenticity. But I, I do want to acknowledge that as authors, it can be very, very hard to say it's okay to not be professional. 
Um, I think there are a lot of us who have, are almost a little defensive of our profession because you know, there can be this dismissiveness about us sitting around in our pajamas all day writing. Um, and you have to say, no, I, I am the CEO and creative director of a small business. I am also the marketing department and the art department and all these things. So a lot of us have, you know, we work very hard to be very professional in our social media. So there is this little catch of hesitation as you have to let that go a little bit over on t- over on TikTok to be authentic with people. Um, so I want to acknowledge that. And like I said, Jane and I might be hyper aware of it because we do write, write romance, we write erotic romance. So it's a genre that is traditionally, and we have experienced it quite a bit, people are very dismissive of. So to say that I'm, it's okay for me to uh, make a video where I am not put together and I sound like I'm, you know, not quite sure what I'm doing because I'm asking a question or I made one saying, I don't know what to title this book and like asking people to throw out titles. I was kind of like, no, I should never say, I don't know what to title a book because I should have all this market research about it. And I, there should be focus groups or something behind it. That's what a professional author would do. So if I put out there that I don't know what to title it, am I diminishing my author brand? But I got massive engagement and I got a lot of people saying, I'm so excited to read this. Let me know what you title it. So I want to acknowledge that there is this this uneasy feeling for authors. Yeah, a sort of informality and sincerity works. I mean, I can remember I worked in video production after I left the BBC. And of course, with that background, we told every CEO we work with in the companies, you know, this is Volvo or whatever company we work with, you've got to look professional. Mm -hmm. And it was the time of the growth of, of, you know, personal social media video which was inaccessible before from equipment wise and we would say you don't want that on your website so you're going to look awful and very quickly we worked out that was what was drawing people in and actually yes the front page of the volvo website should be professional but click on the ceo's bit what a fantastic thing to have him just in his you know whatever clothes talking and that's going to engage and was already um changing minds about how people engage with stuff we're a bit fed up with the polished brochure uh, image mm-hmm. now um okay that's <clears throat> that's great and it's a perfect platform it is the most informal platform i think there is a uh, tiktok feels that way now i want to talk content creation jane you've referred to this a couple of times that you weren't necessarily the most comfortable person at the idea of appearing on video and hosting your own little um videos and i think a lot of people will resonate with that they'll be thinking yeah, yeah. there's no way i'm going to do that <laughs> so just tell us how you went from somebody who was probably think- thinking there's no way i'm going to do that to regularly doing that yeah, so the transition was for me really was using just a simple trick of creating an author character for myself. So not somebody who is inauthentic to the things that I love, like the kinds of books I like to read, the, the stuff I write, all authentic in that, but like my appearance was different. So I wear a wig in my videos, I wear makeup, which I, I clearly do not do ever. Lila sent me a whole bunch of lipstick and was like, wear this. <laughs> um, and you know, I used a lot of the filters that are inherent in the app. So they have beauty filters, you have, they have makeup filters. I played a lot with those kinds of things to make myself feel comfortable. But now I've reached a place where I'm gonna start stripping that back, mm-hmm. I think. It's just not, it's, it's, it, uh, prohibitive for making like spur of the moment videos, right? Because if I have to get on and like get all ready to feel comfortable, like now I'm at the point where I just want to share something and I want to do it spontaneously. So I'm getting away from that now, but that's how I did make myself comfortable at first. Um, and there's also like different, w- if you're playing into the trends of TikTok, for example, there's a filter where that just uses like your eyes and your mouth, and then you can put your um, features on an inanimate object. So for example, I did some where I put my face on my uh, bookshelf and I was like, oh, I guess I have enough books now. And then my bookshelf was like, oh, you're full of it, you know? <laughs> so like kind of talking to myself in the videos, but in a way that didn't really show my appearance. So there's a lot of different tri- tips and tricks you can do to disguise your appearance or to like lessen that hurdle at first. And then I think you get more and more effective the less you let that go. Yeah. So you had a bit of a, a barrier to help you. And do you enjoy doing it now, Jane? 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, so I, at first I felt like I had to do this. This was something that like I could see the potential of. And that first maybe week or two that Lila were on there struggling. Well, honestly, it was probably the first week by the end of the first week, both her and I had a thousand followers already. And we were like completely committed We're you can instantly feel the difference. And so I think I just got like kind of addicted to it. And then now it's fun. Now, every time I even think in TikToks, you know, like I think in the video, like when I hear the music of something, I'm like, oh, <laughs> that would be a perfect TikTok. Talk, <laughs> you know, and, and nobody else in my life knows what I'm talking about except for Lila because she's yeah. the only one who TikToks with me. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> so, Lila, I want to talk to you about the technical uh, side of things. I think you are, mm-hmm. Jane said you are the more technical of the two. So, I don't want to <clears throat> cast aspersions. Um, no, for sure. How technically competent do we need to be to be competent at TikTok? You don't need to have any sort of video prior video editing experience or anything like that, but it is not going to be the same as simply recording a video on your iPhone. And the reason for that is that TikTok, aside from the social media platform aspect, like the home screen, um, which is your two starting to be three feeds um, because there's a live feed they're bringing out, but the little plus button, if anybody's looking at their TikTok app right now, the little plus button, once you hit that and it opens the video window, you're actually in a fairly advanced piece of video editing software, which has very advanced integrations to the point that you can bring in popular sounds and those have all been licensed, but there are a lot of different tools and effects that are built into the TikTok app that are unique to TikTok. Maybe not the concept, but how they're implemented and what they look like in TikTok can be very unique. So there's things like, there's a common sound and it's called the intro to book talk. There's actually several sounds. It means at some point, some content creator made a sound. Sometimes they're sort of half singing it and it's a chance for you to introduce yourself and it'll ask questions like what's your name? What's your favorite color? What's your favorite book? Who's your favorite author? And to respond to that, you make a video. We're talking about very short clips of sound that you need to respond to. And the first time I tried that, I thought I needed to just be listening and doing all those things at once. And then you realize that TikTok has a built-in tool. It just looks like a timer button, like the timer button you'd use so that you could run and get in front of the camera, you know, that 10 second or three second timer. So it looks like that button, but when you explore that function, you realize that it allows you to set an end recording time so that you can say, I only have this four second clip during which the audio I'm using is asking me for my favorite book. So I'm going to use the timer to start it, but also use the stop um, or the end timer to stop it so that it will automatically stop recording when I'm done with that sound. It gives me a chance to start the recording. I've got 10 or three seconds to grab the book that I'm gonna hold up, then hold up my book during the four second recording window. And it has automatically stopped so that I can then go and prep whatever it is I'm going to do next. So, That's the kind of thing that it took a long time for us to figure out in TikTok. Um, And because, as I said, so many of the instructional videos are really geared towards that more traditional TikTok dancing, um, advanced sort of video transactions that have a playful feel, we didn't really find tutorials that told us how to do what we were seeing on BookTok. So that is where I think the difficulty came in. Also, of course, we unknowingly for our first few videos picked the most difficult kind of videos to do. Um, Now we tell people the first TikTok video you're gonna make is there's a sound that is simply, it's about seven seconds and it's an audio of somebody saying, what's this person reading right now? This, this is what they're reading. And all it is is you hold a book up um, side on so you see the pages. And then when they say this, you flip it flat so you see the cover. And you might think to yourself, why wouldn't I just make a video where I'm saying, hey, this is what I'm reading. Because that shared sound, because TikTok is all about that um, lip sync and dance, a sa- you can follow a sound and sounds that have been used over and over bump that video to be played more often. So a video where I'm using a sound that's been used, you know, 
hundreds of thousands of times by book talk to show off a book is automatically going to get me that play that simply creating a video from scratch wouldn't. So those are the kinds of technical aspects of the app that are very challenging. Um, I, I, I absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I just don't want people to hear that, though, and think that that's the only kind of videos that you can make. You can, like everything else, you can make it as simple or complicated as you want, right? So when Lila jumped in and made her first video, she did the intro to Book Talk. And I'm like, I can't do that. So I did something super simple. I showed my office. I literally panned the camera, and then I was like, this is where I work. And I said something about, has a fancy office, ends up writing on the couch. And then I showed a picture of my laptop on the couch where I was actually writing, you know? So it can be as simple or as complicated as you want. And that doesn't mean it's going to be less effective. So we had a student in our class. So the um, video Lila was telling about was the is a first assignment in our class. We have an assignment every day. One of the assignments is called a character confession video, which is another style of video that's extraordinarily popular and has gone viral for a lot of people. So we had a student in our class, Tanya Nappas, who um, is a cozy mystery author. She so just going back to something you said earlier, this works for all genres. This is not right, just I was going to ask that. It, it, yeah, it so, does work for all genres all genres. So she writes cozy mystery. There's not a speck of romance in there. Um, and she did a video, one take unprepped, just her talking to the camera where she said something like, you know, I can't believe it. My husband was such a dirt bag and he, you know, um, ran this Ponzi scheme. I didn't know anything. He, now he's escaped from jail and turned up dead right here in my campground lake, you know, like acting all annoyed. And at the end, she holds up her book and is like, if you want to find out what happens, do this. That's an extraordinarily effective um, type of video content that we we teach in our class. That video got over 180,000 views for her and she um, ascribed 400 sales of her first book in her 22 book series to that. So, you know, for five minutes of your time <laughs> and no editing at all, um, that is an amazing marketing tool. So it can be as simple or as complicated as you want. You know, obviously the more you go in, you'll you'll start to see the potential and you'll want to do more and more. But it doesn't have to start that way. Well, when I watched your presentation, what what it opened my eyes to was the video editing aspect of TikTok. And and because of my background, I've I've done five TikToks and then gave up. But I did five TikToks just for fun. And I edited them all off in my in my own video editing, Premiere Pro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I I think maybe I used the graphics in one of them, but I don't think I even that. I think I put everything and then just uploaded them. But what I'm excited to, and I've started to plan this, having, you know, I'm quite inspired by this, um, to do a sort of Cold War, which is my my background and my book's background, a Cold War kind of series on the best spies and, and stuff like that and try and build an audience that way. Um, and and But I need to understand how the video editing works. Uh, it, even for somebody with my my background, it scares me slightly, um, especially fiddling about with a phone. As I get older, I prefer yeah. things to be bigger um, <clears throat> to work yeah, with. But, yeah. but I think this is all durable. And um, uh, I think we're going to have a conversation probably off air after this. And hopefully at the time this interview goes out, we can announce it. But we would love to do more with you on this subject because I think there are, you know, we have 150,000 authors in the SPF community who are usually eager to learn new things and, and learn where they should be. So I, I suspect if you guys are up for it, there's probably a live webinar in the offing soon where you can teach us because you're very, very good at that, at teaching well, thank you. how to approach TikTok thank and how you. to do it right. Um, and, you know, you took us through, I think, on you did it live, didn't you? You actually had your phone doing your <laughs> webinar live, which terrifies me also as a webinar well, center. Yeah. To be honest, like that is just a small taste of like what we do in our actual class. So Lila has made all of these tutorial videos where she hooked her camera to her, um, to her computer. And then she's able to edit like a little circle, like click this, click this. And she has, I mean, she probably did what 25 minute videos on some of these assignments. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. like it's a lot, as Jane said, <laughs> There is there absolutely you can open that video editing app and you can just record a video and you can post it and not worry about it. Absolutely. There are tons of people who do that and have been effective doing that. You can learn all of the options and things that you can use um, and you can get as advanced or as simple with it as you want. You can use the built in TikTok effects and make that sort of a gimmick that's a very much a part of what you're doing on TikTok or you can just ignore most of the effects unless you want to slap a pair of fake eyelashes on because you didn't do your makeup um, or you want to put like a, a dashing mustache on because you're pretending to be a villain for a hot minute. 
those are, it's really up to you what you want to do. What I don't want is I don't want any author to say, I cannot do it. No, you can do it. Saying I will not because I don't have time, I am not interested, that is absolutely valid. And please do that, protect your time as an author. But I will not hear cannot. You absolutely can. And if you don't know how to do it, like just I will show you how to do it. <laughs> yeah. But don't say can't. Don't say TikTok isn't for you. Don't say your genre isn't on there. Don't say you're too old for it. Absolutely not. One of the things we do in our in the class is we try and help people like come up with an idea to like adapt their brand. And like, James, I was totally thinking for you, there's this guy who's who is a spy. Do you know who I'm talking about, Jane? He is. He's ex CIA mm -hmm. and his daughter interviews him yeah. on TikTok. It's fantastic. And though it's I was like, you should duet those videos. And if there's one that has like an aspect or something he's talking about that's in one of your books, because he has a lot of you know, Cold War stuff. So I was like that, come on and do what? And I just love that it's his daughter yeah. interviewing him, you know, and he's retired and you just, you know, just totally straight face, like a little terrifying because you can yeah. definitely tell he's seen some stuff. And she but asks him that questions. Like she's asked him, she how really long will democracy questions. last? How oh. long is democracy going to last in our world today? I think I've What's seen the... this guy. I think I've seen yeah. this. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. very good. There's a, there's a lot like that. So whatever it is you do, there's at the very least you could get on and silently duet them, which is putting their, your video up next to theirs. You're silent on the screen and you can just pop up your book cover using the sticker function in the video editing app. So there is something absolutely, I think for everyone on TikTok. And like I said before, I do think it's going to become non-optional here in a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I think two things you said were really valuable. I don't know if you got this from our presentation, but we do absolutely suggest that when people translate their author brand into TikTok content, that they focus on a series um, because you get people coming back all the time. So it works for the same reason it works in books, right? So I do a series called um, Hero Material where I find videos on my For You page of guys doing things that are hero worthy. The easiest one would be thirst traps. Um, but, you know, also if they do something kind or something funny or something like that, and then I duet them. And most of the time I like hold my books as if I'm reading and then I look up like, oh, what's going on here, you know? So my book is still in there and I try and relate the video to my book character in some way. So if it was like a cowboy doing a lasso trick or something, I would use one of my Western erotic romances or, you know, along those lines, right? So there's a way to adapt your brand. And Lila is especially good at this. She's so good. So she has a series called Character Protective Services where she runs a fake hotline and people can call in and like report authors for doing terrible things to characters in their books. And those videos have been very successful for her. Her Outlander one, I think, has is coming up close to what, 175,000 views or something like that and led to like 4,000 followers in a single week. So um, that is a super good strategy. And then the second thing that you had said, I lost it, sorry. <laughs> it, it, it'll come back. Tell us, yeah, about, yeah. tell us about the course that you've created then or the, uh, the tutorials. Um, yeah, so we created, it's a, a class we call Romancing Book Talk. Um, it's not just for romance authors. We called it that because it was a funny pun on Romancing the Stone. And it was late at night when we came up with the name. But um, we took everything that we had learned about TikTok and all the things that we had found difficult. And we took the answers to those and we put them into a class. And um, it is a hands-on class where it's a half the strategy of TikTok and the high level and the other half is actual hands on how to work the app. And Jane and I give individual feedback every day on the 10 days of the, of the course. We asked everyone to create a specific video and then we give feedback on those videos. And it is in um, the videos that we've asked people to make, walk you through the most common skills that you will need so that you know how to use all of the top things that we see on book talk from different effects to using a trending sound to that stop motion or sort of the um, stop capture uh, timing function that we talked about. And so we have this class that is very hands-on and we're doing that because as I said, we really think that this is very important for authors and 
we're um, it's about a 10 day class. It is run live and we have one coming up. I think August 14th, we're starting our next one um, and we'll probably do one again in October. It's fairly limited in size because Jane and I um, do give individual feedback every single day to every single class participant. And we also hold live office hours where we I hook up my phone. If you have any question, I'll show you how to do it live and, and on Zoom in my phone. Um, but that's the idea of our class. And like I said, it's called Romancing Book Talk, but it is open for you know all genres, all authors. And we've had people come from all different genres. And, and some people are a little bit overwhelmed by the class because it can be overwhelming, essentially learning a piece of software. Um, and some people have really been ready and hit the ground running, but the people who were overwhelmed the first time, um, you know, just like um, in SPF, if you were an early sign up person, you're still getting access to the new course materials. Uh, we're doing the same thing. So our people from our first round of our class, they're coming back and we'll keep adapting and improving content as TikTok improves because it's also a very dynamic and fluid platform. They're constantly rolling out new features. Superb. And where can people find the course? I mean, I've, I did Google romancing the TikTok, but TikTok is a bit ubiquitous on my Google return results. <laughs> yeah. I came up quite a lot of other stuff, but I found, is it readertease.com? Is that you? Yeah. So that's that's the actual product listing. If they okay. want more information about the class, they can go to janeryland.com forward slash romancing dash TikTok. Okay. Um, or they can just not uh, navigate from my site. It's janeryland.com author services, and then you'll find it there. Okay. We'll put those but links. Yeah. Jane Sorry. has reader tease, so oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I was gonna say that's that, yeah. that is I Jane's also... site. Reader tease. Jane sells really fun teas for readers, ah, so yeah, we okay. simply use that for the product <laughs> listing. That is Jane's yeah. site. That's my shop. Yeah, that's where I sell all my eBooks and audiobooks and stuff too. It just has a weird name because it started out with t-shirts. Well, I'm very excited about this, and uh, we have to have some conversations. I think because this seems to be an area that we need to be. Um, uh, on top of, and I think you guys will help us with, but probably best to have those off air. I think my greatest TikTok moment actually was introducing, um, I'm trying to remember his name, but Lucy Score. I, I posted in a little WhatsApp group and Lucy Score is one of my friends and, and there's a guy on TikTok who does these um, romantic story pitches. You've probably seen him. I can't remember his mm -hmm. name, but he says, here's the idea, is a chef working in a small town. And then he plays the editor going, this is amazing. And he gets... <laughs> hyper hi, you know, hyperbole all over the place and he gets very carried away and excited and uh it was, a, it was a funny payoff anyway he contacted he loved she loved them contacted him and he did a trailer for her so he, he, he quite rightly didn't want to push her book on his channel he doesn't do that which is great i like that integrity but he was more than happy to for a bottle of champagne or 100 bucks or something to do one of those specifically for her book for her readers and that was brilliant and he's i for me he was like a big star on tiktok but um you know yeah. there are it's a place where people are emerging um talent that's, all over but the that's place. the <clears throat> really cool thing is like everyone interacts on tiktok even big stars like i see lizzo respond to people on tiktok all the time there's just a different culture around engagement and so you should expect as an author that you should be doing the same for yeah. your readers right this isn't a place where you post a video and walk away um, you really need to be replying to every single comment that comes in and just you know building that rapport with your with your followers and you can even answer questions with another video so that like engagement is everything on tiktok yeah it should be on all social media platforms i think yeah. twitter is one of the worst for seeing people who do what you talked about earlier lila tell me what book you're reading and you just think okay fine <laughs> so i've fallen for this a couple of times and then you see 200 people have responded and they haven't even liked or responded to anybody's comments you think well so what was that about right. you just typed that and then went off mm -hmm. and forgot about it like that's engaged that's not engagement um so right. tiktok i think 100 percent you get I'm, I'm sure you get back what you put in. Look, we're sort of out of time for this chatter. And it's, it's been, I think it's whetted people's, I hope it's whetted people's appetite. We've kept it reasonably high level. There's a load more behind the scenes and we're going to hopefully work with you and try and um, uh, make TikTok more accessible to as many people as possible. But so uh, look, thanks very much indeed for coming on and starting to demystify this hallowed TikTok we all hear about. Thank you so much. And I wanted to give a quick shout out too, if I could, to uh, Trisha O'Malley and her fiance, Alan. Alan is an avid listener of the podcast and he actually gave us the heads up when you guys were talking about TikTok that day. So that ah. is how the, the, everything came full circle. So Brilliant. Thanks. Trisha and Alan, thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you so much for having us. Thank you for responding to our random e email. Where I was like, no, Mark and James, you got to do TikTok. <laughs> 
This is the self publishing show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. There you go. Have you dabbled at all in TikTok, Mark? Have you been on the platform? Yeah, I have a little bit. I re- very recently, over the last week or so, I've, I've uploaded a couple of trailers, which is not really the kind of content that most authors who are doing well are using, but I just wanted to get an idea of how, how the platform works. And yeah, it looked, I, it's interesting. I'm certainly interested in learning more. I don't know anywhere near enough to talk about it with any kind of qualification at the moment. So I'm certainly interested in, in and coming to that webinar, I think it's going to be a very, very good one. I tell you who's embraced it and has got a face for it is uh, Ernie Dempsey. He's uh, very witty on TikTok and doing some some good stuff. Cecilia Mecca as uh, well, okay. very good. Yeah. She's embracing yeah. it and um, and doing some good stuff. Um, it is it's an interesting one because it does look to me like it's personality driven, which terrifies a lot of us and a lot of authors. The idea of it being you and engaging, but it's very interesting listening to Lilo and Jane, uh, who both of whom would not have put themselves forward. As as people who wanted to be on air on on front of camera, both of which, both of whom have found ways of doing it that they're comfortable with and are starting to really relax into it. So it's not you don't have to be a television presenter to do TikTok. You just have to be a sincere person talking about something that's of interest, and it seems to work really well. So yeah, TikTok. We have that webinar. If you want to learn how to do it in much more detail than we were able to go into in that interview. You can sign up for free at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash TikTok and we'll do a uh, bit an hour and a half or so with uh, with Lila and Jane. And um, if you've registered for it, you'll get a recording of it as well. So you can go through it in slow time and there's more stuff to come out about TikTok in the in the coming months. Good. And, uh, and a few people won't touch it because it's Chinese. And we were, I was told that by a couple of uh, authors in America that you must absolutely not go to TikTok because they'll know everything about you. And um I know that's also a feeling some people have, but you know, I don't care. So that's fine with me. The Chinese don't care about us. They don't care about me and you. They are, no. They've got bigger fish to fry. Uh, good. Okay. Look, on, on that frivolous note, uh, thank you very much indeed to Leela and Jane. Uh, thank you very much indeed to you, Mark. Uh, you're off to Tenerife, so we're going to record another episode in just a moment. Uh, but until then, all that remains for me to say is it's goodbye from him. And a goodbye from me. Goodbye. Bye. Get show notes, the podcast archive, and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com. Join our thriving Facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash Facebook. Support the show at patreon.com forward slash selfpublishingshow. And join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author. Publishing is changing. So get your words into the world and join the revolution with The Self-Publishing Show.